impressed. Seems like all anyone ever said to me was stuff like, Hey, Gary, how's the team look this year? <laughs> I remember going for weeks without talking hardly to anyone. Well, except my parents. And I think that my success as a coach and as an author is mainly because of all of listening my parents did. If you're listening to your teenagers, now you're talking. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. On the Van and Connie program here this next week, we're going to talk to famous people like Carl Malden and Faith Daniels. Also, we're going to talk Turkey. We're going to talk Hawaii. It's going to be action-packed. Don't uh, miss yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your volunteer opportunity is waiting. Call the volunteer connection today. This is not about Japan bashing or any other kind of bashing. This is not against any people. This is for America. Start looking out for some of the forgotten Americans. The Japanese were laughing at us. Everything is getting worse and worse. Anything theft to build. The story is just not true. There's a risk. From NBC News, this is Sunday Today with Garrick Utley, Mary Alice Williams, and Al Roker. And a very good Sunday morning to all of you across the land. Hope you're up and doing well this morning. We're ready for our 90-minute get-together, our weekly uh, rendezvous. Our top story this morning uh, involves politics. This may be a make-or-break day for Governor Bill Clinton, Democratic presidential candidate. Tonight he's going to speak to the nation on television about uh, his personal life allegations of infidelity. We'll have that in other stories this morning and a lot more. But the big news is that it's the 26th on this 26th Super Bowl, that is, and not a moment too soon. That's right, Mary Allison. In fact, in Minneapolis today, their weather's not going to be all that bad. A little warmer than normal. A lot of rain in Texas and some snow in the Northeast. Derek? Well, people interested in all that will have the full weather uh, forecast from Al, plus the news in a moment this morning, among many other topics on Sunday today. We want to take some minutes and talk about America first. Should the United States protect jobs here at home by building protectionist walls against our competitors? Can we isolate ourselves from the rest of the world these days? It's certainly a current hot topic now that the Japanese even want to buy a Major League Baseball team. Should that be allowed? That's our cover story this morning on Sunday Today. America first, our place in our world. And inside the cover of Sunday Today, we'll learn what goes on behind the scenes of the Super Bowl commercials, how advertisers use state-of-the-art techniques to get you to buy. And we'll meet Paul Marshall, a powerful black author with an insightful definition of what it is to be a black woman in America today. I was one of those young women back in the, in, the, in the late 40s and 50s who had ambitions, who wanted to go to college when this was just unheard of in my community. The key to it all is this. Technology will only take you in advertising as far as your idea is valid. Plus, we'll go to Northern Ireland and revisit the scene of a violent confrontation that became Bloody Sunday 20 years ago today. Al Roker has some suggestions about driving safely in winter, and we'll get some absolutely biased opinions about the teams competing in the Super Bowl in Minneapolis today. First, Garrick has the news. Thanks, Mary Alice. So we begin in this country with politics. Uh, Democratic presidential hopeful Bill Clinton is in Washington this morning preparing to go public about his private life. Clinton, who said Saturday the infidelity allegations against him are not important to voters, has taken an interview for tonight's 60 Minutes after the Super Bowl. He's expected to answer a claim published in the supermarket tabloid that he had a 12-year affair with a former TV reporter and cabaret singer. Meanwhile, uh, Larry Nichols, a former Arkansas state employee who filed the lawsuit that originally alleged that Clinton had extramarital affairs while governor has dropped that lawsuit. And uh, the latest poll, meanwhile, in New Hampshire shows that Clinton's lead in the primary race there has eroded sharply since the allegations were first made. Well, other news. The chances for a miracle on 34th Street appear dimmer than ever today. After 133 years, the, the parade may have ended for Macy's department store chain. There are reports this morning that the giant retail chain will file for bankruptcy possibly as early as tomorrow morning. Macy's problems, of course, are one more result of the continuing recession, but there is at least one place today that's booming. 
for this moment. It's Minneapolis, the home of Super Bowl 26, and NBC's Mike Betcher has more on that. You wouldn't see this in Miami. Gives us something to do during the winter when it's cold. <laughs> you couldn't do this in New Orleans. If I don't make it, my ticket's in my suitcase. So just, you can give it away to charity or something. More than 60,000 ticket holders have braced themselves against the cold and brought their suitcases to the Twin Cities this weekend. During Super Bowl week, the rich and famous seem to outnumber mere mortals. I love Washington. I, don't, I really love Washington. Coldest weather um, south of the Arctic. I was uh, actually in a winter carnival parade one year, and my arm was frozen like this for about a year. Famous and mere mortals together will spend about $100 million in Minneapolis and St. Paul, and there will be future benefits. Not only are they here able to generate dollars down the road from convincing people to come to Minneapolis with their big events, any kind of convention, but they've got the extra bonus of their convincing people to come in the winter. But the Super Bowl, like the World Series before it, is not without controversy. American Indians are demanding that Washington drop its nickname, the Redskins. Overall, though, Super Bowl organizers believe they have proved that a cold-weather venue can be fun, as long as you're indoors. Mike Betcher, NBC News, Minneapolis. And another city, a far different mood. There aren't many bright days in Northern Ireland these days, but today is even more somber than most. Residents of the city of Derry are marking the 20th anniversary of Bloody Sunday, a day on which British forces opened fire on Irish Catholics who were demonstrating against the British government's policy of imprisonment without trial. 14 of the protesters were killed, 15 wounded. We'll remember Bloody Sunday later in our program this morning. And that is a look at the news, the top stories on this Sunday morning. But more to come. And how happy are they that the Super Bowl is inside this year? Well, you know, actually, uh, it's normally 20 degrees this time of year in Minneapolis for a high. Today, it's going to get up to 27. Yes! Short weather. Let's take a look at what's going on for the rest of the country. Take a look at our satellite loop, and you'll see that basically we've got a lot of moisture down in Texas. We've got a little Alberta clipper that's coming across the Great Lakes. Bring some light snow there. Maybe a flurry or two in Minneapolis later today. And we had some snow. You can see the system moving off the northeast. Uh, what it looks like on the ground is this. Uh, we can see that we've got some showers uh, moving into the northwest as a system comes there. A lot of moisture coming into uh, the Gulf Coast in Texas. Showers and thunderstorms. Sunshine much of the rest of the country with chilly conditions. We're expecting some light snow, one to three inches generally, from the Great Lakes across right on into the Ohio Valley. Some light snow still lingering in northern New England, and we're expecting some light snow also in parts of southern Alaska. That's what's going on around the country. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Expect a high today of 33 degrees in Chicago, and they will have a chance of a little snow. 29 degrees in New York City, and we'll have sunshine later in the day. 72 in Los Angeles, plenty of sunshine there. Rain in Seattle, and 50. And that's the latest up to the moment. Thanks, Al. And next, a woman accused of a series of especially brutal murders. She's on trial now in Florida. If she's found guilty, she could be sentenced to death. Some people think a woman should be spared execution. Others think she should take her punishment like a man. When we continue. At BASF, we don't make the plane. We make it lighter. We don't make the lotion. We make it smoother. We don't make the dress. We make it brighter. We don't make the carpet. We make it tougher. At PASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. PASF, the spirit of innovation. Dear Folgers, I tried the Folgers switch on three of my fellow sisters. Instead of our usual ground coffee, I made Folgers crystals. They all complimented me on the taste and aroma. You do make wonderful fresh brewed coffee, was repeated more than once. They never realized it was Folgers Crystals. People who thought they were drinking fresh brewed coffee were secretly switched to Folgers Crystals. Tastily yours, Sister Mary Norbert Bauer. The Lexus LS400 has an extremely effective electronic security system. Well, it may look rather simple to you. To a car thief, it looks something like this.
Where do you want to be next year? We decided uh... that we want to adopt. And we're planning to live on one income. We never decided not to have kids. It's just that the, uh, the timing never seemed right. Can we set up our portfolio so that I can, I can stay, stay home, home with the baby? baby. Over the past week, the nation got a glimpse of what prosecutors call a new kind of serial killer, a woman. The defendant, Aileen Warnes, has confessed to killing seven men who picked her up on the highway and said she was acting in self-defense. Even before it began, the trial was clearly going to look at matters of guilt and innocence, but also at the method of punishment. NBC's Jim Polk has been following the trial. Look into the face of the woman cops say is the nation's first female serial killer. And few people would see a monster there. Yet prosecutors say Eileen Warnos killed seven men within a year. Motorists who picked her up as a hitchhiker along Florida highways. She kept souvenirs of the slayings in a storage bin. This church worker's suitcase, his shaving kit, his tan jacket, the victim's son. Yes, that, that was his. In a taped confession to cops, Warner said she left the man dead in a wood somewhere in Georgia. I shot him once and stopped him and I don't really want to do this to you guys. I don't want to do because you're going to... If you live, if I didn't let you live, you're going to tell, you know, who I am and all this other jazz and I probably get caught, you know. It's that attitude, no one left alive, that has the prosecution asking for the death penalty, even for a woman. In Deland, Florida, the prosecutor, John Tanner. Uh, we don't think that women have a special dispensation when it comes to the death penalty. We think the law applies equally to all citizens, men and women alike. Capital punishment for women is still very, very rare. Of all the people on death row, only one in 75 is a woman. Yet there has been a perceptible increase in the number of women sentenced to death in just the last three years. A growing attitude that women who kill should take their punishment like a man. Women do commit far fewer murders than men and are far less likely to kill in cold blood. Yet when they do... It appears when the woman commits the murder like a man would, she is much more likely to get the death penalty. Cleveland law professor 